Welcome families to episode four of our sacramental series. This is Claire. This is Angel. And that's Todd. Hey, and we're your friendly neighborhood faith formation team. And today we're going to talk about forgiveness mm. and reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So I've heard lots of different homilies from priests over the years that say when they first became priests, <laughs> they thought maybe 50% of all the problems in marriages and in, in homes and, and, and you know mental health issues and things, everything, they thought maybe 50% of those issues are related to unforgiveness mm. when they first became priests. Okay. Then after being in the priesthood, they say, well, I think 75% of <laughs> all of our issues mm. of unhappiness and, and you know, woundedness really come from unforgiveness yeah, wow. and then as they retire they typically say I believe over 90% of all <laughs> the problems that we face are due to unforgiveness mm. so this is a big issue mm. yes amen yes and it's a big issue that deserves being talked about so mm -hmm. one thing that is really important to think about is what is forgiveness and what is it not mm -hmm. um, growing up I used to think that forgiveness was um, just saying, okay, sure, I'm, I'm forgiving and I'm forgetting, right? And so when something, you know, really bad happened to me, I had a really hard time saying, God, how could you let me forgive this? Or how could you forgive this? Because I can't forget it. This is a reminder for me, you know, every time you see this person or every time, every day, right? So you and thought it was forgetting. Yeah, I thought yeah. forgiveness pretty much equaled right. forgetting, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that forgiving is not about forgetting. Actually, forgiving is acknowledging that there is something wrong, something that deserves mm -hmm. to be forgiven, right? Mm -hmm. um, and actually, it's not about forgetting, but it's actually about freedom. Right? And so it's really in that moment, in that place, in that situation with that person, with that relationship. It's saying, I am forgiving you so I can allow myself the freedom to be able to not be chained down by this anymore, to not feel like this is a weight that's holding me mm -hmm. back. So really forgiveness is um, not about you know downplaying what something must have happened in our lives because uh, sometimes really painful things happen mm -hmm. to us, right? Absolutely. Oftentimes through no fault of our own. But Forgiveness acknowledges that pain, but then says, I want to be free mm -hmm. from this. Not be right? a slave to I don't, it. I don't want to be a slave yeah. to it. So it's like you're letting go of any kind of retaliation. Exactly. You're letting go of anger. Yes, towards... any bitterness that's yeah. accruing, right? Yeah. Um, all of that, you're, you're giving yourself the grace to be free, right? Mm -hmm. You're receiving the grace to be free. And likewise with that person, you're giving them the grace to be free as well. Um, free from any shame or any guilt because we don't need to put that on them anymore, right? Not because mm -hmm. they don't deserve to be sorry for what they've done, but again, it's all about freedom, right? And letting God really be the judge in that right. situation mm -hmm. and, and giving it to him and having it be in his hands. I've um, heard forgiveness being described before is withholding forgiveness is almost like trying to poison someone but drinking the poison yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, again, it, forgiveness is all about healing for our own sake as well. Um, not even just for the sake of that person, but for our own sake. It's a, it's a both and kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, what forgiveness is not is it's not about forgetting. It's not about downplaying and saying, oh, it's not a big deal. And it's not even about saying that, oh, we can just go back to the way it was before, right? Mm -hmm. Boundaries are important, and sometimes they do come from a place of something going wrong and needing mm -hmm. to be addressed. But forgiveness, again, is all about freedom, right? For, for you and for that person. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So then, forgiveness and reconciliation sometimes go hand in hand, or you think of them hand in hand, right? But they're really two separate things. Reconciliation itself... Um, you know, it, it's this really cool word, actually. Reconciliation. To reconcile means, if you take it apart in the Latin, it actually means to meet again at the eyelashes. Isn't that neat? <laughs> what an image. Because cilia are your eyelashes, it's right? Not distanced, it right? Not distanced, <laughs> it's not socially distanced. It is not socially distanced. Reckon, reconnect at the eyelashes. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it, it right. means to be again to be with. Again the eyelashes, right? right? Yeah. So to meet again, eye to eye, mm -hmm. to be reconciled with someone is to be able to look them in the eye, to look eye and eye, eye to eye with someone and, and love them. Yeah. And like we said in the last video, love them means want what's best for them, right? right? And vice versa, them to want what's best for you. That's really what reconciliation is. And, you know, we, we're talking about this because we're getting your children prepared for the sacrament of reconciliation. 
right? And that sacrament has had different names over the years, and you'll still hear them, right? Confession and penance mm -hmm. and reconciliation. But I think reconciliation is the best name to use for that sacrament because really that's what it's doing. Yeah. It's helping us to um, be able to be eye to eye with God again, right? right? Mm -hmm. To be able to, to, not that we haven't committed sin, but to confess that sin, to, to be freed from it, to be forgiven of it, and then to be eye to eye with God again right. in relationship, because it's all about relationship. God mm -hmm. always wants forgiveness and mm -hmm. always wants reconciliation. Right. And awesome. another, another word, another way to understand forgiveness too, that I had learned was, it's to give as it was before, mm -hmm. to treat people as you did before this wrong happened, mm -hmm. to treat people the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes in human relationships, we might forgive, but we may not be able to reconcile. Mm -hmm. and, and that's so, okay. Yeah, sometimes, that's all right. Like Claire said, sometimes there are boundaries that need to be set and that's healthy, right. right? But it's not healthy to not forgive. There are times when it's not a good, safe, or fair thing to be eye-to-eye right. -eye with somebody. Right. Maybe you need to forgive, mm -hmm. to, to let it go, to not try to seek any kind of, you know, any, any kind of uh, wrath on your own part. <laughs> let God be the, the judge, but then you step out of that relationship. Right. for boundaries. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in human relationships, we don't always have to reconcile. Right. But with God, God wants reconciliation yeah. with Him and with us. And that's super important. It's all about restoration in that relationship. Mm -hmm. What God wants for us, right? Just like Angel said, reconciliation is all about that relationship that, that the Lord mm -hmm. seeks after us, that the Lord pursues mm -hmm. after us. It's not even just um, him just saying, oh yeah, come by whenever you want. Like, no, he's actively pursuing us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I fear that we can think that God has office hours almost. <laughs> and that like, oh, if I don't make the office hours, then somehow I'm going to miss the mark or I'm, I'm going to miss um, being able to, to really connect with God in prayer. But God is always continually pursuing us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. God's way is always going to be life, love, and service. He's mm -hmm. always wanting to draw us deeper and deeper into love mm -hmm. and deeper and deeper into healing. So in the confessional, is the priest the one that's like forgiving? It's all about the priest? No. no. It's not. It's not. When you go into the confessional, it's just you and the priest, right? No. It's actually not. Jesus is present. Amen? Mm -hmm. Jesus is present. And in all of the sacraments, the priest is standing in the place of Jesus. So in the confessional, when you give your sins to the priest, when you tell the, your sins to the priest, mm -hmm. and he prays those words of absolution mm -hmm. over you, mm -hmm. it's not him forgiving you, it's Jesus. Now the mm -hmm. priest the priest is there um, for a couple of things, because somebody has to stand in the place of Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. But also he stands in the place of the community too, mm -hmm. right? So part of what happens when we sin is we damage our relationship with the world, with our brothers and sisters, right? With our, our friends and family. We with the are, body of Christ. With the body of Christ. We are damaging all of those relationships, even if we don't think we are, even if we don't know we are. Mm -hmm. Our sin affects the body of Christ. And so the priest in the confessional stands in the place of the community to welcome us home to that family. Right. And he stands in the place of Jesus to give us those words of absolution in the mm -hmm. sacrament. Right? So just, I mean, it's very powerful. And there's no such thing as a private sacrament, even confession, because the priest is there as the community and as Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not just me by myself. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So we have this beautiful sacrament of reconciliation, confession, mm -hmm. um, penance. penance, I was trying to say, contrition mm -hmm. sometimes, right? Yeah. All of these words. Rebaptism. We'll mm -hmm. talk more about the actual act of, the actual mm -hmm. walking through the sacrament itself in our next exciting episode. Um, so for right now, we're going to end with an improvisational prayer instead of just a, mm -hmm. something that's just been written up. And I guess I'll just start. We'll yeah, just, we'll just Each one it. of us will just pray a little bit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we ask for you to open our eyes so we can see your truth. Open our ears so we can hear the forgiveness that you want to give us and you want us to give others and open our hearts, Lord, to love like you. Amen. Amen. Lord, we just thank you that wherever your spirit is, there is freedom. Amen. 
So Lord, we just ask for the grace to be able to seek out your Holy Spirit, to know that we are being sought after by you, to know that um, there's so much healing and so much freedom that you want to offer us. Mm -hmm. Help us to have the grace to be able to accept that and to return home to you if there's anything um, blocking us from accepting that kind of forgiveness from you. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we, um, I thank you so much for all the things that you have forgiven me for in the past <laughs> that I know that you don't even remember because um, you promised that you don't. So I thank you for that forgiveness from the past and I pray for um, the wisdom to come to you again in the future for further forgiveness. And I just thank you so much for the sacrament of reconciliation, Lord, that we're able uh, to be blessed to come to you in that way and to receive your beautiful words of forgiveness mm -hmm. and to feel that cleansing of our soul. Mm -hmm. um, I thank you so much for that, Lord. Amen. Amen. So we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye, all.